Hi, glad you could join us. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. This community is going to transform itself in September. Have you heard that the, I've got to use the right title, that the, the World Rowing Championship will be happening here in September. The program today is about rowing. Well, it's about people who want to know how to become proficient at rowing. There's an organization in our community, we're very proud that we have such an organization because it's quite special. It's called the Sarasota Crew, or simply Sarasota Crew, C-R-E-W. My guests today are associated with Sarasota Crew, and rather than my telling you about Sarasota Crew and what they do and how they do it and why they do it, that's why I have the guests, because they know all about it. Let me introduce my guests for today. Let's start with Casey Galvanic, and Casey is the executive director and head coach of Sarasota Crew. Then we have the very lovely and very capable. Now, I, that's, that doesn't mean that, 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 uh, that Casey is not lovely and capable. He's handsome and capable. But my dear friend, Chris Fowler, is very capable and very lovely. And the reason I know that is because she has been the chair of the Community Video Archives special luncheon, yearly luncheon, this will be your 11th year? 11 years. And I remember each year after an enormously successful CVA luncheon that she chaired, I would think I must call Chris and thank her and hope, dear God, that she's going to be able to be my chair next year so that I would call her with trepidation she would answer the phone, and I congratulated her and, and tell her how much, how wonderful she is, because she is. She multitasks like people inhale and exhale. She can do three or four things successfully and well at the same time. She's very beautiful. She's very easy to get along with. There's nothing, if she doesn't know how to do it, she says, I'll find out. I'll check how to do it, and I'll, I'll, I'll learn. I'll do it. She does it. I would call her and she'd say, yes, I'll be there next year. And then she would say, Annette, I'll be there each year that you're running it. I would have given up before, <laughs> before now. <laughs> no, seriously, she's marvelous. Her background is, well, we get to talk about backgrounds of each of my guests. So let's start, let's go back to Casey. Okay, Casey, talk about young Casey. Uh, where, were, where were you born, and, and what, what about young Casey? What, what was he like? Young Casey was certainly flawed. Um, <laughs> but I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and, uh, you know, having a good time as a kid. My brother and I, you know, we... Rather uh, close in age? Four years. A little okay, less so than four years. that's pretty close in yep, age. Yep. He's the elder or yes, younger? Yes, elder. Elder. What's that? Elder, certainly elder. He's the elder, okay. <laughs> was he a sports enthusiast? Yeah, my family supported us in all sports. We played many, many sports, each of us growing up. Uh, I think I benefited from his extra age. So whenever he started something, I got to participate. Well, you must have been a good little brother because, <laughs> no, seriously, Casey, because big brothers don't bother. If the little brother is a pain in the neck or a nuisance, they don't really bother with them. But if they kind of learn quickly and, and, and they like doing what the older brother, you know, that kind of thing. So you don't give yourself enough credit, I'm sure. Where is your older brother now? Uh, Asheville, North Carolina. But he's in town for a rowing regatta, so it's nice to see him. Okay, so you haven't seen him in a long time. Right. Okay. Uh, all right, so here you are, young Casey uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, learning things from your big bro, <laughs> and uh, something clicked when you tell me about whatever happened. Well, actually, we had moved to Northern Virginia at this time in our lives, and my brother and I were riding our little BMX bikes around in a subdivision that hadn't been fully developed. And we rode down to this, this body of water. We had never seen it before. And we heard a lot of commotion. And it happened to be rowing shells coming around the corner. And soon thereafter, my brother started rowing for the high school he was going into. And then once I became 
an eighth grader. I could row for the high school, and he had me come join the rowing program. So that's how I got started. Now, I admit, first of all, to be an ignoramus when it comes to all sports. But rowing is not a sport that, that we see very often. Correct. Okay. So I'm less knowledgeable about that, which is, doesn't leave much room at all. <laughs> <laughs> However, it would seem to me that what are the skills, if you could, if you could list them, that one needs? Because I notice, and we'll see some pictures later, the team is a, a very enormously successful organization. Uh, we'll hear some statistics that, that indicate or corroborate what I'm saying. But what are the skills that you would look for or hope that would be developed for rowing? Patience is the number one attribute. Patience. Patience. Why? It's a, what they call somebody smarter than I, uh, defined as a delayed gratification sport. Um, it's like cycling. You do a lot of preparation for a short period of, of you know, your competition. What kind of preparation? Long practices, lots of running, lots of rowing. Um, lifting weights, stretching, things so take you, a long you're time. You're developing the upper portion of your body so that it, it's, am I, am I reading that correctly? Well, that's part of it. The, okay. the core is essential. I know when you shook essential. hands with me, he shook hands with me, Chris. I, I, I still need a little <laughs> surgery on that hand. No, you're very strong, and I think that it, you weren't even realizing how, how, or you don't. So I'm nervous, I'm nervous. <laughs> no, but seriously, obviously, the, the kind of strength we're talking about is developed. You just don't, mm -hmm. aren't born with it, yeah. and you developed it through Roy. Okay, so, all right, now, the, the school itself, it's not a school, but it is a school. Well, it's a, it's a community program where we pull from 26 pr schools in the, in the area. Um, in our local community, we service three counties, but there are people that come from around the world to row with us. So it is, it is an exciting. What are these, how old are the range of students? Well, now, this year, we started eight years old. So we've, we've. Do their parents know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they come down and hang out. They help a lot, too. So it's very nice to have that interaction with the families. And you have women as well as the girls Absolutely. as well as boys. Okay, I want to get the statistics out, but should we see the pictures before the statistics or the statistics first, or should we find out a little bit, help them find out a little bit more about Chris first. Let's talk about Chris first. Okay. <laughs> Chris. I saw Chris, the first time I saw Chris, she was chairing an event, and she was so good at it, so competent, and, and so pretty. And I thought, well, she's just made to order for what I would like to have as the chair for the community video archives. And afterwards, I asked her, and I said uh, something about, uh, do you know our organization? Oh, yes, she did. And I said, uh, is this the only event you, you chaired this year? Oh, she <laughs> said, no, uh, there were others. Others? <laughs> what did you say? I believe there were nine to 12. It was 12. Oh. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> I said, oh, well, then you, you, you're not going to be. No, she said, yes, I'd love to do it. Just don't worry about it. I've had as many as 14 that I've, and they all came back and wanted you to do it again. So obviously it, weren't, it wasn't a problem. Multitask, it should be her middle name because this is, enables her to do so many things because she can, she's the living personification of someone that you would say has a, adopted uh, the, the procedure of multitasking. Uh, and I'll say to her, we'll have a meeting, and I'll say, don't forget to speak to Phil Mancini. Yes, she said, I've got it down, done it already while we were talking. I've arranged with the lunch and everything, and all I saw her, I thought she was tapping the table. She was, <laughs> she was working on her computer. But she doesn't know the, 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 the word no, not to me at any rate. I'll say, can you do such and such? Oh, sure, yes. Can you do, well, so-and-so is not going to be here next year. Do you think you could take, oh, yeah, I'll take care of that. Just one marvelous person that you have there, and I guess you realize that, because Chris Fowler is their the, the, uh, organization, and that is Sarasota Crew, their uh, person in charge of development, yes. development director. And you picked a winner. <laughs> uh, 
give, me, give us, I, I talked about your work here in Sarasota, but before this, you were doing other important work. I actually am a nurse by trade and... Um, by profession, to, darling. By profession. <laughs> uh, came to Sarasota, it was a point in my life where I didn't have to work as a nurse any longer and didn't know anybody, so I went out and joined Junior League uh, to try to meet people in the community and become more involved. And doing that, I learned about the nonprofits in the community. I started to work with them and realized, like you said, I'm really good at this raising money thing for these organizations. And it kind of morphed into me joining a board, participating on committees, chairing events like yours. And then I realized that I could get more enmeshed in an organization, really become passionate about it by being a staff member. And so I kind of made the transition from doing the community work to becoming a paid person in the nonprofit arena. And Chris is the mom of two handsome young men. Uh, one young man is what, 11? One is 11 and one is soon to be 14, he reminds me. Oh, you're going into the bad years. And <laughs> Don't say that. Do you have any children? I do not. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're big and strong, and you can take care of her boys when they, <laughs> when they get rowdy. Uh, at any rate, they're handsome, and they're wonderful boys, and they are uh, certainly a credit Thank you. in every respect. See, I, I, I tell this to people. I try to adopt Chris. Her mother wouldn't sit still for it, mm -hmm. but, you know, some mothers are just <laughs> very possessive but I consider you my second mother, so. <laughs> well, I'm always available for their, for their, if they want to do something and go somewhere and you can't do it for some reason, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I've got that down. <laughs> All right, I'm glad. Uh, let's talk about, so we know more about uh, uh, Sarasota Crew. Did you take that, that list? Of, I do, I have it. You have it, okay, mm -hmm. do you need to consult it? Or? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> It is a list of, a statistical list, of where the ranking of their, their organization. The, the, again, the name, and let's put that number on the screen, if you can, Damon or Joe, whoever is sending, oh, wonderful, very good, through 966-979, what is the last number? One. 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 Okay. All right, that's the number that you want to call if you want to get information, and you may want to hurry up to do that because I have a feeling once that championship occurs, they're going to be lined up around the block mm -hmm. to, to talk to you and see if they could get into your, your organization. Okay, we want to get to those statistics, then we want to get to those pictures, because time is going to run out. Tell us the statistics. Well, we've got lots of them. Most of them, that we're, the ones that we're most proud of are the ones that are our grade point average 80% of our kids have a higher than a 3.5 unweighted grade point average. That's pretty impressive. Um, we do a lot of work with them to help bolster their GPA and you know, with a mentoring program if they are having trouble. Uh, and then our graduation rate and on to college. Graduation is 100%, but on to college is 98%. So I think 98% mm -hmm. you could be very proud of. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, my goodness, I don't think there are any other organizations such as yours or even in any way similar that can boast of 98%. That's, that's almost 100%. You figured that one out. <laughs> it's pretty high, but those, those uh, few, five, that chose to work or go into trades, you know, that is uh, a good, honorable decision. So. Now, these young people, they go on to college, by and large. So what, they, they strengthen their bodies and they strengthen their ability, obviously, in other sports as well by mm -hmm. conditioning themselves to rowing. Uh, because I don't think, is there, are there many rowing championships that function, that are, go on? Um, there are a lot of regattas. Um, there are a few championships. If, if you had too many, they would all be meaningless. Right. <laughs> so um, we have, you know, our organization spans a, a large age group now. We have adult rowing as well. But our youth program, there's youth championships in the U.S. That happens in June. It's just once a year. So that's our our biggest challenge and our biggest goal. Is now, that if I remember reading that statistical list, mm -hmm. you were in the top five or two percent of almost every category. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. 
So something's good and something's wonderful at Sarasota Crew. I'd say the genetics of Sarasota are pretty good. <laughs> I would say exactly, ditto. Okay, so we've got, we've got uh, an organization that is timely, it's going to be having, uh, obviously, uh, become very, very popular in what they do. I don't know what relationship you have to bringing the, the rowing uh, champ world championship here, but I'm sure that the Benderson family are aware of your existence very much so, <laughs> and are probably delighted to put the two together. Uh, we're going to have uh, quite a few people here. How many people are coming? Estimated 40,000 spectators. Did Good. you hear that? <laughs> 40,000. That's unbelievable. It is a, it's a large event, and I think it's going to be transformational for Sarasota. So if you are interested in rowing at this point, you're going to be even more interested, and I'm going to put that number on the screen. Chris, uh, in your work in development, I'm sure that there are people who understand about uh, Sarasota Crew and are just delighted to help in any way possible. Uh, is this what you find in your work? Absolutely. I think once people hear about the mission and some of the statistics that Casey mentioned and the things that we're accomplishing with these kids, it's, it's transformational to them and, you know, it kind of sets them on the right path for the rest of their life, both physically, educationally. It's a phenomenal organization. So once people understand that it's not just about kids rowing in a boat, it's so much more than that people are ready to, to join in and support us to help further our mission. It must be more than that because if you've got these kids who, who go on to college in, in a large number and develop other areas of their thinking and relationships to people and working with others because this, this is a group sport. Mm -hmm. Correct. And uh, so that there's so much learning that goes on that is subliminal. <laughs> they, they don't realize it's happening. It's the best learning in the world. I taught for a lot of years, and that, that's the best. Not what, oh, I learned that today, but uh, I guess I must have learned that today because I didn't know it yesterday. You know, that well, we, kind of thing. we have an end-of-year banquet where we honor all of our senior rowers, and they get the opportunity to speak to the parents and the other rowers that are in the, in the room. And without a doubt, they all share how this has been such an amazing experience, how it made them a better person, how it made their families better because they saw the work that the children put into the program and it's a commitment it's six days a week for our varsity rowers they don't have time to do anything else so that that mindset and and that dedication m propels them into the future okay i'm going to uh, we're going to talk about i think statistically is there anything else that you want to mention i think you, you covered the going on to college and percentages and that kind of thing you were uh, sarasota crew was number one in many of those categories a lot Several of them, a lot of them are you know what everybody else likes to hear about and that's winning championships um i i try to communicate to the kids and families that that's not winning in my book winning is making sure that they're better kids when they leave um, so, yes, winning the gold medals and the trophies is important to the kids. It keeps them involved, and their parents seem to feel like there's something, you know, that they can hold on to. Um, but the, the evolving at student athlete is the most important piece, and that's hard to get a statistic on. And nor do they really don't have to. Uh, be aware of that. It's going yeah. to happen anyway Correct. without their awareness and they're going to benefit from it just as greatly as if they were, probably more so than if they were aware of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I do want to get those pictures on before time runs out. So let's see those and then we have so much more we could talk about if we have the time. Let's see the first, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to see young women right. in this. And, right. and, and they, they're going to be just as strong and oh, yeah, just as able as the boys. Okay, so who do we see here? What group is this? This is our, our youth men's eight last year from our national championship. Um, it's obviously an eight-person boat, but that does not, that count does not include the coxswain who's in the center. That's Sydney Edwards, and she went on to cox for the junior national team last summer. She represented the U.S., uh, along with three of the other uh, boys in that boat. So. They were in Rotterdam over the summer. And then at the end is the uh, co coach in charge of the men, Caitlin Crouch. 
I love the way they lined up. They put the shortest person right in the middle there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You must feel like a dwarf with these people sometimes. I am. And, <laughs> and you're a tall girl. Okay. okay, next group, next picture. And what do we see? This is last year, uh, these are a lot of the same kids. Um, this is our state championship, the men's junior quad. Um, we actually, for the first time, allowed multiple entries in the event, and our boys went one, two. So they went first and second place at our state championship. And uh, How proud you must be. Well, you know, it, a lot of people complained, but it was, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we have, like I said, the genetics are strong in Sarasota, and we, we provided a little bit of guidance, and, you know, this comes out at the end. So. Well, I think it's more than a little bit, but okay. I'll take your, I'll, I'll, I'll the modesty is fine. Okay, oh my gosh, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is our, our last year at Youth National Championships again. Uh, this is our women's youth four. Most of these were younger athletes. They were sophomores. Well, there were two, two juniors and two sophomores in that boat, and the coxswain was a, was a junior as well. And, you know, they did very well. They qualified. They won a regional championship and then went on to nationals. Um, for a young boat, they did tremendous. And probably a lot of things that we were talking about, their own personal strength and their own physical uh, 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 comfort in, in their strength. Women don't really feel that way most of the time. Uh, I'm sure they're excited about the rowing championship of the world coming here. Uh, are, are you going to participate in anything that happens when that comes? Um, yes, I'm, I actually have been tasked with a, running a youth regatta that's an ancillary event to the World Championship, and it will be you know, an all-star youth rowing event that will take the all-stars from each of the six, six districts in the U.S. to compete against one another at the championship. It should be fun. It should be. It should be yeah. interesting as well. Uh, do you have room for these people, for, for viewers to sit? Oh, absolutely. There's, okay. There's All right. Because lots I, of I, can't, I, I cannot imagine. Uh, I don't know how, how anyone can take care of that many people and say, well, we're ready for you. Come on. <laughs> no. They say, no, don't come. How about staying home? <laughs> okay. Um, wonderful. We're going to have so much tremendous interest. Uh, and I was telling. Uh, my guess about the French Film Festival that I remember years and years ago, and it was not that many, but there were thousands of people that came. And I remember we were at all the events at that time, and uh, remember people saying to me, oh, Sarasota is so beautiful. I, my husband and I have made an appointment with a realtor, and we're going to buy a house in Sarasota so we can get ready to sell, to have a lot of additional people who are interested in rowing here. Uh, and maybe we've, we've started something. You never can tell. Congratulations to you for this wonderful organization. Congratulations to you for being part of it and uh, knowing the work that you do for being an asset to this organization and a major asset as far as you're concerned. Oh, certainly. So I thank you very, very much. Uh, is there any uh, feeling about who's going to win this championship? It's a, it's a tough year after the Olympics. This is where a lot of people have retired, and uh, the new young talent comes into the fold, so it, it's a little difficult to judge. But um, yeah. you know, I'm sure that everybody's going to put forth their best. All right, now, now you've got how many countries? There will probably be about 46, well, 65 countries. 65 yeah. countries. And, but they'll have, you know, maybe one single from the country. Uh, there are a few rowing representative countries that will have 65 athletes, a lot, they're a full contingent. Um, it's, uh, it's how, like how, how many are in the contingent? Well, it'll be upwards to 60 in the contingent from each Upwards of the, to 60 yep. in a contingent. Yep. What does the contingent Well, do? that would be the men's eight, the women's eight, the men's quad, the women's quad, the straight fours, the, uh, the doubles, pairs, singles. There's lots of events, <laughs> lots of events to represent. I, I assume that there is going to be, that Benderson is building this uh, appropriately to seat as many people as he possibly can. Well, yeah, I'm, they have a pretty sizable budget based off the, you know, the bed tax. Um, so it's, uh, I think the, as more tourism comes into Sarasota, the ability to build bigger and greater things or bigger and better things is, is happening and they are doing it well. 
I'm tired, just, just I'm exhausted <laughs> listening to all of this. But I know that, that uh, they were talking when I had the library on my program, and they were talking about the book, One Book, One Community, which is the story of the boys in the, in the boat, the story of the, the same event that took place in Germany in 1936. And uh, each country has their own uh, participating team. Is that the way Correct. it works? Yep. Okay, and there's 61 or, or two countries that you believe, okay. So we're going to have a lot of foreign languages mm -hmm. being spoken. Correct. And uh, it's amazing. My son was a chess uh, champion, and he participated in Olympiads in various countries. And you'd go in and people from this kind of thing, 60 different countries, all spoke English, but Americans mm -hmm. didn't speak French or Italian or no. German or all the languages that they speak. We don't have the opportunity to do it. Maybe this will encourage people to learn languages and to, to be uh, uh, accessible mm -hmm. to people in other countries, which I find interesting and I find really uh, educational in a lot of ways. Congratulations for what you've created here. And congratulations for associating with what he's created here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking forward to the event, uh, September the 23rd. 23rd. 40,000 people. Whew. <laughs> Keep on keeping on. Uh, we have the telephone number one more time. Can we put that on the screen or we don't have time for it? We have one minute. There it is. 966 966. And it's a very simple name. You can look it up in, in, on the line or wherever you want to. It is called Sarasota Crew. C-R-E-W. So you can look it up. And if you didn't take aren't able to write down the number or the, or the uh, website, you can find it very easily. Uh, you might want to check out before the crowd comes. Mm -hmm. Sarasota Crew. A delight meeting you, and you were everything that Chris said you were. <laughs> She's very, uh, quite an admirer of your ability and, your, and your, your, the work that you do. So I think you make a great team. Thanks so much, Chris. We'll see you in preparation for the CVA uh, luncheon, which is April, April the 24th. We're about out of time. We've, I think we've been out of time a while. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been watching that carefully. But we'll see you next week, same time, same station. Okay? We say goodbye. Bye for now. Well, that's Miss Fasten. Time really flew. We bid you adieu from community. If you want to know why we love it here, so check out community. Well, it's a who's who, a what's, when, and where show. It's a mover and shakers who care show.